a 14-year-old girl went on an online date with a man she had never met. But it turns out that the man is an online predator who is always looking for minors to use. Hi, back again at Allo Recaps. Today we will recap a story from a 2010 movie, Trust. Before we get into the story, I hope you and your family are healthy and happy always, and without further ado, let's play the story. The movie begins with an energetic teenager named Annie Cameron. Annie is the second child of the Cameron family. Her brother named Peter and her sister named Kate. Annie was born into a very well-off family. Her father William is a successful businessman, and her mother Lynn is a real estate agent. It can be said that Annie has never been economically deprived. One night, all the Cameron family members gathered to celebrate Annie's 14th birthday. There was also Annie's little friend named Brittany. That night, Willem came up to his daughter who was chatting with someone named Charlie. When asked, Annie explained that Charlie was a 10th grader at California High School. Will seems curious about what his daughter discussed with Charlie. Seeing this, Annie hurriedly asked her father to leave. Annie's days were always occupied with her chats with Charlie. One night, Lynn asked Annie to tell her about Charlie. Annie said Charlie was smart and funny. He was also said to be going to Berkeley's UC volleyball team this year. Annie seemed so happy to see her family united, in giving her support to continue her relationship with Charlie. Before going to bed, Annie contacted Charlie again. There Annie sent a photo of herself, where it was later revealed that they had never met once. The next day after school, Annie hurriedly checked her laptop. She also looked disappointed because Charlie had not sent a photo of himself. When asked, Charlie instead made a confession where it turned out that he claimed not to be a high school boy, but he was a second semester college student and he was also 20 years old. Annie was silent for a moment because Charlie had lied all this time. But this annoyance turned into a smile, after Charlie showed his photo. Since then, Annie has become increasingly infatuated with Charlie's figure who is so fascinating to her. One night, Annie was again shocked by Charlie's confession. Where this time Charlie claimed that he was 25 years old. Charlie then called and explained everything. And it seems that the charisma of Charlie's voice managed to make Annie not mind the age. Not only that, Charlie's maturity now began to lead Annie to talk about adult things. And strangely, Annie was getting curious and interested in the adult things Charlie told her. The next day, Will and his wife were seen preparing to take Peter to college. Annie and Kate will temporarily be accompanied by Aunt Mary. Apparently Annie told Charlie about it. Charlie also became interested and invited Annie to meet that day. Long story short, that very day Annie waited for Charlie at a mall. Soon, an adult man approached Annie and said that he was Charlie. Annie was disappointed to find out that Charlie was a grown man. But Charlie kept begging her to explain everything. Charlie began to explain that he was afraid that Annie would leave him if he spoke the truth about his age. Right now he really loved Annie. That's why he came all the way from California. Charlie added that he was still the same Charlie. Someone who always listened to everything Annie had to say day and night for the past two months, and he was the one who would always love Annie. Whether like bewitched, Annie accepted all explanations from Charlie. Slowly, Annie began to calm down and began to feel comfortable with Charlie. While they were walking around, Brittany, who was also looking after her parents' shop, saw Annie with Charlie. They started talking about many things. All the things they liked together, especially volleyball. Hours of conversation finally made Annie trust and want to be invited anywhere by Charlie. At that moment, Charlie handed over a gift. It was something Annie had always wanted. Whatever was on Annie's mind, she didn't refuse any of Charlie's advances. She even let him take her to a hotel to try on the gift. The gift turned out to be a set of underwear. Charlie then asked Annie to sit next to him. He kept complimenting Annie on how sexy her body was. This made Annie feel flattered, and she eventually agreed to do whatever Charlie wanted. Unbeknownst to Annie, Charlie had been recording everything. At dinner, Annie seemed to be in a mood. When asked, Annie didn't want to say anything. That night, Annie was still waiting for a reply from Charlie. But unfortunately Charlie disappeared like swallowed by the earth. Of course it made Annie very disappointed. While at school, Brittany approached Annie. She asked if it was Charlie who was with her yesterday at the mall. She also said yes and they had also had an illicit relationship. Not long after, Annie was called by the principal. Where it turned out that Brittany reported the case of harassment that Annie received from Charlie. That afternoon, 
The whole school was shocked to see Annie being picked up by officers to give a statement regarding the harassment of her. Will, who got the news, went straight to the hospital. There he was awaited by the officer, who explained that Annie was being examined to collect evidence related to the rape she experienced. Suddenly Will and Lynn were shocked, because the incident occurred three days ago and Annie did not tell anything. They were again shocked to hear that the perpetrator was Charlie, who was estimated to be 40 years old. Shortly, Annie came out with Gail, a trauma counselor, and an FBI agent named Doug who had also interrogated Annie. There he concluded that the perpetrator was from another country. That night, Annie was escorted back to her house. There Annie handed over the underwear that Charlie had given her earlier. Doug then asked Annie to contact Charlie again. But Annie said that Charlie had not returned her messages for a long time. Doug asked to try again, as it was the only way to find out where Charlie was. Doug and his assistant started preparing the tracking device. Once everything was ready, Annie called Charlie, and unexpectedly, Charlie returned the call. Charlie then called with a secret number. Shortly, Lynn's cell phone also rang. And somehow, Charlie was able to know that their conversation was being intercepted. Suddenly Annie was upset to find out that Charlie just left. Upset, she left them all. Empty-handed, Doug said goodbye. He said he would let them know any progress he found. After putting Annie to bed, Lynn and Will were devastated to see what had just happened to their 14-year-old daughter. The next day, Will seemed to be very depressed. The image of his daughter being abused always loomed over his mind. He couldn't believe that someone could do that to a minor. William then looked for someone he could hire to catch the perpetrator. And he managed to get a special agent. Elsewhere, Annie appears to meet Gail. There she asks what she was asked to come here for. Gail asked Annie to share all her worries to relieve her feelings. But strangely Annie said she didn't need all that counseling. She has no problem with losing her virginity. She is willing because she loves Charlie. Annie said that she felt comfortable with Charlie. Charlie is a kind, sweet person, and what Annie does is always fully supported by Charlie. Annie also wondered why her love affairs involved the FBI at all, while many of her friends were no longer virgins but no one made a fuss about it. It made Gail silent. In the afternoon, Doug informed Will that he didn't get any digital traces from the motel, because Charlie admitted that at that time his wallet so the motel couldn't get his identity. In the evening, Lynn asked Annie to make up with Brittany because what Brittany reported was for Annie's good. But Annie said that she really hated Brittany at the moment. She really didn't like Brittany interfering too much with her love affairs. A short time later Will returned home with some reports from his hired man, to which he was sent some photographic images of sexual criminals who often roam Chicago. Annie was then called to recognize Charlie's face. But unfortunately she didn't find Charlie's photo there. Annie also seems to be still upset because her father is still busy with these affairs. The next day, an ambush was carried out by Doug and his team. After that, he informed Will and invited him to meet. There Doug explained that Charlie used a ghost program that could obscure the location of his whereabouts. As a result, their ambush had the wrong person. But Doug said that he had obtained the script of Annie's conversation with Charlie. Because it was confidential, Doug refused when Will wanted to see it. But when Doug went to the toilet, Will took all the documents away. Will then went to his wife and showed her all the nasty chats that Annie and Charlie were talking about. It really made Will want to slap his own daughter. But Lynn forbade him and asked him not to talk about it to Annie. In the night, Will came to Annie's room. He tried to hide all his anger, and asked if Annie had gotten a reply from Charlie. Annie looked upset at her father, and asked why he was still making such a fuss. Will said that Charlie should be arrested because he had raped Annie. But Annie angrily said that Charlie had never raped her. Annie remained adamant, thinking that Charlie was a good person and that they loved each other. The next day, Will went to Gail to find out what Annie had told her. But Gail didn't want to reveal all the conversations because they were confidential. Will can't hold back his pain. He's actually very angry that Annie has been lying to him, and didn't even tell him anything after the incident. Gail said Will should stop blaming Annie. In a big city such things are inevitable. Children can only be controlled when they are near us. But when they are far away, we don't know what happened. Gail added that the most important thing right now is not to judge what Annie has done. She is wrong but right now Annie is also in deep depression. The most important thing right now is how they get out of the problem and strengthen each other. A few days later, 
Da gave the news that the postmortem had found a matching DNA profile. Doug also reported that there were three other rape cases in different years, where the DNA profile was identical to the one that attacked Annie. Annie was still defensive and said that it could have been Charlie's ex-girlfriend. But Doug confirmed that they were all minors. Doug then showed photos of the victims, and all the victims were underage, even one girl was 12 years old. Of course it made Annie flinch and leave them all. Not long after, Lynn was shocked to see that her daughter was not in the room. It turned out that Annie went to see Gail. There Annie cried so much. She was really hurt to know that she was a victim of rape. She really regretted not realizing that all of Charlie's seduction was just to get his wish. One night, Will appeared at what he thought was the perpetrator's house. He goes inside and beats up a man, then fires a shot in his head. But it turns out that it was just Will's imagination at the gun shop. A few days later, Annie participated in a volleyball match at her school. In the middle of the match, Will saw a man filming the girls playing. Thinking it was Charlie, Will went straight to him and beat him up. But it turned out that the man was Serena's boyfriend. It was lucky that the man did not report Will to the police. Upon arriving home, Annie scolded her father. The incident had really embarrassed her in public. Now she felt that it was her father who had ruined her life. Her father tried to explain, but Annie didn't want to listen. She asked her father to stop bringing up the incident again. The next day, Brittany approached Annie at school. She asked if Annie had looked at the internet. Annie snapped and searched with the keyword Cameron. It turned out that she found a porn site that displayed her photo complete with her phone number. A few moments later, Will got a call from his wife. In a panicked tone, she asked Will to check on Annie's condition right now. Will immediately went upstairs and broke the door to his daughter's room which was locked from the inside. That's where Will later saw Annie lying in the bathtub. Annie was immediately taken to the hospital, and luckily she got immediate help because she had overdosed on drugs. The next day, early in the morning Annie saw her father sitting in the backyard. Annie went up to him and asked why he was outside. Will then told her about Annie's childhood. Will was proud that Annie had been such a brave child. She was even braver than her brother Peter. Will is confident that his daughter will be able to get through this time well. He believes Annie is strong and able to overcome obstacles. Will then said that he regretted not being a good father. He was not always there when Annie needed him. Now as a father, Will really couldn't forgive himself for not being able to take care of his daughter. Annie was deeply moved by her father's words. They cried together and hugged. The movie then ends by showing a video recording where Charlie, whose real name is Weston, is seen with his family. Apparently he is a physics teacher at a high school. It seems that he has a wife and also a son. And the movie is finished. The movie Trust provides a disturbing portrayal of the dangers of online predators and the traumatic impact they have on their victims. The acting of the actors and actresses is superb, especially Liana Liberato who is able to portray the complex emotions of an abuse victim very convincingly. This movie reminds us to always be aware of the dangers of online predators, especially for children. Parents should keep an eye on their children's online activities and have open communication about the dangers of the internet. For victims of abuse, this movie shows that they are not alone and there are many people who care and want to help. Trust is an important and heartfelt movie with a strong moral message. It may be disturbing to some, but it is important to watch to raise awareness about the dangers of online predators.